Hi everyone, Paul Turley here, and uh, I just want to give you a quick tour of a Power BI uh, data set and a report that I've published to the web, and uh, you're welcome to view it online, but I also wanted to give you a peek uh, behind the design of this uh, data set. I know with the, um, the outbreak of the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus, a lot of us are paying very close attention to this data. I uh, started working with a client uh, about two weeks ago who uh, they anticipate that their supply chain and their customer shipments are being delayed and canceled. And they wanted to see um, how the um, outbreak of the virus in different regions were affecting their shipments and really affecting their business. So we're all really trying to respond to this. Uh, of course, it all affects, affects us personally. It's affecting our families, but it's also affecting our business, which in, in turn, of course, uh, has a personal effect. So um, I think we're all trying to figure out how to analyze this data, how to understand it, and, and how we can uh, make adjustments to uh, business and personal life as a result. So um, this project, it really has been a side project. It's It's been something I've been doing on nights and weekends, but now that I have a reliable set of data, I do plan to kind of roll this back into some of my client projects and be able to help some of our consulting customers be able to um, respond to the information that we have. So I'm gonna take you to my blog, and uh, of course this blog post will be updated. Uh, you've probably gone here to find this video, which I'll be adding to this post. But I uh, posted this on March 14th. You can see that the, this first link right here actually takes you to the uh, report that I've published to the web. I just recently made some changes, which we will likely not see, not yet. I, I changed the misspelling of Johns Hopkins University, and that will show up uh, after the caching gets, gets flushed. Um, if you have experience with publishing Power BI reports publicly to the web, you know that you don't see the page names as tabs down at the bottom. You normally uh, can navigate using the page numbers down here. You can still do that, but I've created bookmarks and links within this menu page that will take you to each of the report pages. So before we do that, let me just tell you where the data came from and uh, how it was integrated. Uh, so this data is from the Center for Disease Control. Uh, the data is curated by the Center for System Science and Engineering at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. So there's a link to their site. And this is a link to the GitHub repository where they actually store these files. So if you go to GitHub, you can see that there are daily files, CSV files that are generated. Those are the files that I'm using as the data source. So um, it took a bit of effort to import and massage that data, still kind of optimizing that process and uh, to be able to make the daily refresh um, a little easier to manage. But um, uh, thanks to a number of people who kind of inspired this and have helped look at it and, and make some incremental changes. Pete Gill from Pragmatic Works had initially scraped data off of a, a website at, um, uh, 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 world of meters, uh, dot info, which actually was fed by this data. And then uh, some other folks, Carol Perry and Robin Abramson and, and some other folks at Pragmatic Works have helped out. And I did use a shape map uh, custom definition from uh, David uh, Eversfeld, who is uh, an MVP in the community. So let me give you a quick tour. You can see that uh, it is March 13th, I'm sorry, March 4th, 15th as I'm recording this. And so my date is one day out of date. But that will be updated every day. So this is the case trend by date. Here you can see that um, we're looking at a selected span of dates. I have a standard range date slicer up here in the upper right hand corner. If I pull back that back, you'll see history of the entire outbreak from the first reported cases recorded on January 22nd. You can see how it has grown worldwide since then. These are confirmed cases uh, in white. This line will actually turn to black uh, based on a change I recently made. Uh, recovered cases here in blue and then deaths from the outbreak are in red. I'm showing the top 10 countries based on confirmed cases because there's so many countries where uh, we have data available. 
Uh, you can use focused mode to see any of these charts in full uh, view. I have changed the colors just based on some feedback on my blog, and thank you for those of you who are providing feedback. I, uh, you're welcome to continue to do that, changing the colors so that when you go to focused view, you'll actually be able to, to see the lines and see the labels a little more clearly than you can in this cached copy of the report. Let me go back, and I'm going to go to global case locations. In the uh, top of every report, I, I have the summary for the most recent day. So even if you do change uh, this date range, these numbers right here are going to be as of the end of that date range. So if we were to go back to February 29th, then you would see the number of confirmed, recovered, and deaths as of that last date. It's always the maximum of that date. So you want to move this all the way to the end to mm -hmm. see the, um, the the entire span of data. So here are all of the countries uh, with the selected measure. That's the one of these three measures. So right now we're looking at the confirmed cases. The highest number is in China with 80, about 81,000 cases. And then we can switch that uh, measure here that's going to change all of the numbers on this page. Let's go back to confirmed cases. And you can see that the uh, color over a country will show a tooltip. So there's 196 cases there in Canada. If I were to click on Canada, you would see that this uh, shape map uh, then shows the location for uh, these cases. In, in most cases, um, the latitude and longitude is for the state or province, so that bubble's just going to show you up right in the middle. And I understand that they're actually uh, geocoding a lot of this data so that eventually we should see, um, for some reason, regions, the actual location of the hospital or perhaps the, the, uh, the city or the county where the cases are taking place. Well, we may see those, those uh uh, things evolve a little bit. If you use the um, play slicer up here, you can actually walk through each day one at a time and take a, a tour through time. So you can see that we're starting on in late January right now, and you can see the number of cases growing. Uh, you can see these numbers are ramping up a little bit at a time. So we're up to February 5th. And uh, you can pause that if it's taking a while for the page to refresh, which is actually uh, the case right now. So you might just want to hit play and then hit pause uh, if it takes a while for your browser to refresh these numbers. But we can continue to kind of march through time. And you'll see that on March 1st is when we actually get uh, latitude and longitude. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just, just move that forward a bit. So from another report page, let's say that I'm particularly interested in seeing what uh, was happening on March 1st, I can right click on that point. You can see that the details matrix page is available as a drill through target report. And that's going to filter that data based on the um, axis that I had right clicked on. And uh, then I could filter my countries if I wanted to, but I can explore all of those countries. So let me just show you quickly how I built this and how you may be able to, to uh, do something similar. So the first thing that I did is um, I, 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 I captured the URL for the GitHub repository uh, managed by the Johns Hopkins University group. So let me jump over to Power Query, bring that Here's the Power Query behind the solution. I started with a parameter that uh, stores the root path to the list of the uh, all the data files in the GitHub repository. So with that, I uh, created a web source that brings back that list of files. So here are all of the, the files. And um, I built another query that uh, uses the full path to bring back the contents of one of these files and then build a custom function. 
because uh, I can't refresh a <clears throat> data set that has multiple data sources referenced in a single query, I then took the contents of that query and I incorporated it into a uh, query called case details base. And so what that does is it, it uh, references the case files query and then it invokes a nested function that expands a table for each of the files. And so if we actually look at the Power Query behind that, um, you can see that this is where I'm using uh, another web contents query feeding in the, the file name column. And then that brings back a table. I expand that table and once that's expanded, then we have the complete set of all of the column data for all of the available files. So I did have to do some uh, uh, data manipulation just to clean things up. Uh, I found that there are um, some countries whose names have changed. So for example, um, the China and mainland China both show up as separate countries, which was double counting a lot of data. So I've had to consolidate that. Um, and then I needed to make sure that all of the country names matched up to um, the shape names in the uh, map shape file that I used um, so that uh, all of the countries were matched and that everything was um, uh, was mappable. So once that was done, then I extracted out a country state file. So I had a separate dimension table for the countries and states, um, a separate date dimension uh, query called file date, and the rest of it is, is uh, just supportive of a dimensional model that I created. Here you can see the data model which is the result of all of those queries. Um, I'm working on uh, integrating uh, population information by country to try to get a feel for how population density and uh, the number of cases per capita play into the progression of the outbreak. And so you can see that this is a star schema with case details at the center, eventually population by country at the center. Um, with the file date as a dimension and then the country state as a separate dimension, which is then supportive of all of my visuals. So please provide your feedback through my blog. Let me know what your use cases are. How do you need to use uh, this uh, data to be able to uh, make your business run successfully? What questions do you need to answer that are top of mind and most important so that we can all kind of learn from this experience and work together to build solutions that will help us respond to this global outbreak? Thanks for watching. I'll look for your comments in my blog.